Hello guys. So let's get going with this slope deflection, uh, slope deflection method. And today we're going to be solving this frame. This is a non-sway, non-sway frame. And remember, it's a slope deflection that I'm looking for. Slope deflection method for non-sway. Non-sway means that this is not going to be able to displace laterally like that, at least not due to the loads. You can have settlements due to supports, but not due to the loads. And, and as you can see here, on top of the loads also, we have a settlement of the support A. So the support A was there, for example, and now the support A is going to come here. And this distance is going to be 0 0.25 or 1 fourth of an inch. Uh, just as a, as a way of understanding what is happening here, this is a fixed support, and this is gonna, this is a fixed support also. He, this is gonna come down like that, and then you're gonna have something like this, meaning the rotation here is gonna be zero, and this is important, and it's zero because it's a fixed support, and this is a hinge for a pin, so you're gonna have a rotation here, so rotation D, is going to exist, but the rotation B is not going to exist. Uh, so let's start doing this. The first thing that I will do in this case is just calculating EI for the sake of getting rid of that. That's it. And EI is going to be 29,000 multiplied by 3,500. And remember, you have to divide this by 12 square because this is going to be inches to the fourth. This is going to be inches square. At the end, I have to convert this into keep feet. And EI feet square, I'm sorry, is going to be 704861.1 keep feet square. That's the, the value for EI. Now, the first step that we have to do, as always, when we do this, is calculating the fixed end moments FEM. Fixed end moments FEM. And this is really easy. I mean, you come here to the table and you see for BC and CB. BC and CB, you're in this type of situation. So the moment is going to be for this end, it's going to be like that. And this is positive for us. In this case, in the NB, it's going to be WL squared divided by 12. And in this end, from C to B, it's going to be negative WL squared divided by 12. So basically, that's what we have. Fixed end moment uh, BC is going to be W L squared divided by 12, which is going to be W is 2, 2 times 15 squared divided by 12, and this is 3.75. Remember the units, keep fit. Let me just, uh, for the sake of keeping this in order, let me put this in here. Uh, so FEM BC is 37.5. Fit and FEM uh, CV, which is the other end, this part is negative 37.5. Keep it now. We have these two. What else? In order to have a fixed end moment, you have to have loads. So, the other thing that we can get from here is that the fixed end moment CD or DC, or CA, or AC are all zero. All of them are zero. That's super important. The second step. The second step is calculating the angular uh, 
the angular rotation of the angular rotation is kind of like a redundancy right let's say the angular deformation of the cord or the angle formed by the cord meaning the core rotation due to settlement in this particular case or in other words this is what we're looking for psi now let's copy this really quick just for uh, helping us identify what is happening here that was originally the case this is B I'm not gonna put the the loads because I'm more interested in the geometry right now than the loads so this thing is gonna drop here to the new position this is 0 0.25 inches and when this thing comes 0.25 inches lower this is going to come also the point C is going to come also 0.25 inches lower and then this is what we're going to have here like that so this distance is going to be 0 0.25 inches which is the same distance as here and this is going to be psi B and this is going to be psi D when we calculate that we can say that psi BC, I'm sorry, and psi DC, BC, DC, or B and D, whatever you want to call it, is the same thing. So if we want to calculate that, then we can say that the psi BC is equal to 0.25 divided by L, and this L here is 15. Everywhere is 15, actually. 15. So it's going to be 0 0.25 divided by 15, 0 0.25 inches divided by 15, but these 15 are feet, meaning I have to multiply by 12 inches per foot or per feet, this and this cancel each other out. And the other thing that you have to be careful here, let me take a quick uh, 0 0.25 divided by 15 divided by 12, that's going to be 0. Point uh, let me put it in a scientific notation 1.38 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3 negative 3 and remember this is a negative slope so it's going to be negative here negative the other one this is going to be exactly the same because the same dropping and it's the same length but it's going to be a positive slope if you look at that in that uh, in that way so then psi bc is going to be negative 1.38 periodic time tends to the negative 3 and psi dc is going to be 1.38 times 10 to the negative 3 now we have these two equations here let me check something really quick people are they just choose to email me when I am uh, working here and some students are taking one exam right now so okay then I'm here perfect now we have this here this thing here what is the next thing that we have to do we have to apply the equations of a slope deflection so this is the second part now third part apply slope deflections equations the slope deflection equation for this point for this particular point here for BC it will be the moment BC because this is fixed and this is continuous moment BC is going to be equal to 2 EI over L multiplied by 2 times rotation at B plus rotation at C minus 3 times the psi BC the rotation of the core plus the fixed end moment BC so when we apply this let's see what happens MBC is going to be equal to 2 times EI 
2 times EI is this one, 704,861.1 divided by L. And now this was keep feet square and this is feet, so this, this, this uh, amount, uh, these units are keep per foot, times 2 times rotation at B. But look at this. 2 times rotation at B. Rotation at B is 0 because this is a fixed support. There is no rotation. So the only thing that I'm going to have here is rotation at C, which obviously it is rotating, the point C. Rotation at C. Minus 3 times, a, minus three times the core. And the core is negative 1.38 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's MBC. So MBC is going to be equal to 9, 93,981.48 rotation at C plus 429.09. There you go. And we have our first equation. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now, second equation. Uh, second equation. MCB. MCB. It's the same equation basically. Now we only cha change the letters. So it's going to be 2 times EI. which is that value, divided by L, multiplied by, now it's not going to be 2 times theta C, it's going to be 2 times theta C, theta B, it's going to be 2 times the rotation at C, 2 times the rotation at C, plus, now it's going to be rotation at B, instead of rotation at B, rotation at B, but rotation at B is zero, minus three times the chord, but the chord uh, BC is the same, is this one here, minus 1.38 times 10 to the negative three, and that will give us the value for, uh, ah, I'm sorry, uh, plus the fixed moment CB. The fixed moment CV is negative 37.5, minus 37.5. I don't know why I'm insisting in. I know that I have to save trees, but this has to be still legible. Okay, so MCV is going to be 187,962.96 theta C plus 35. 4.09. Now I have this one. And I'm going to call this equation 2. Now what else do we need? We need the moment CA. Okay, the moment CA. The moment CA is going to be equal to... to, do, to, to. Uh, but where I'm going to do the moment CA? Yeah, moment CA. It's okay, moment CA. Moment CA is going to be SST continuous here. So the moment CA is still going to be, if you use this equation like the general equation, it's going to be the same, same old, same old thing here. 2 times 704,861.1 divided by 15 multiplied by 2 times rotation at C. 2 times rotation at C. Plus rotation at B, rotation at A, plus rotation at A, rotation at A here, rotation at A is also zero, because it's a fixed support, so plus zero, minus three times, minus three times the psi AC or CA, I'm sorry, psi AC or CA is the same, but there is not core deflection, because it's just a settlement. There is not any angular here in this frame. There is not any change angular. 
So this is going to be also zero. So it's going to be just this part plus the fixed moment CA, but the fixed moment CA is also zero. So basically for MCA, what we have, MCA is just 187,962.96 theta C. What else am I missing? Equation one, equation two, equation three. What else am I missing? I'm missing AC, the moment AC. Okay, if you check the moment AC, now it's gonna be from here to there. The only thing that is changing when I do the moment AC compared with that is that instead of being two times theta C, then it's gonna be only one time theta C because C is the second member here. So then the moment AC is gonna be half of that, which is 93,091.48 theta C. Okay, there you go, equation four. Now what else, what else, what else, what else? Last part, last part of this is now CD and DC. So for CD and DC, I'm gonna keep this here, just start showing. For moment CD, we are going to use the modify equation because this part here ends in a roller or in a pin. And when then we can use the modify equation. The modify equation, it would be three times EI over L multiplied by Theta C minus I plus the fixed end moment CD minus the fixed end moment DC divided by 2. That's going to be basically the equation. Now, what happened with this CD is this is 0, this is 0, as you can see there. Um, the only thing that is remaining is just this part here. So basically this is uh, 3 times 704,861.1. I should have done this divided by L long time ago, so I don't have to do it so many times. Times theta C minus the rotation CD. The, rota uh, the rotation at C. The rotation at C is the same rotation. When I'm doing CD, we calculated that here. Rotation, uh, where is that rotation? DC or CD is the same thing. So this is the value. 1.38 times 10 to the negative three. So the moment CD, is equal to 1,140,972.2 theta C minus 195.79. Now, the moment DC, moment DC, we don't have to use that. Why we don't have to use that? Because the moment DC is a roller, so the moment should be zero, no matter what no matter what you can think of, the moment here in that support has to be zero. Now, the equations that we use, one, two, three, four, five, and if you want six, you, want, you can include that six, six you want as equation, but then you have how many unknowns? You have one, two, or I shouldn't count this. Anyway, let's count these five equations and how many unknowns? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I need extra, I need extra equations. And what is gonna be my extra equation? Where is my extra equilibrium condition coming from? Now, because this is the method of a stiffness method or displacement method, then first we put the moments in terms of the displacement and rotations. That's what is called a slope deflection. 
and then we just look for the extra equations in equilibrium. What is the equilibrium? We can do equilibrium about the joint C. So equilibrium condition for joint C. What do we have in joint C? In joint C we have the moment CB plus the moment CD plus the moment CA plus the applied moment equals zero. That's what we have. Moment CD plus moment C B plus moment C A C B C D C A plus the one hundred has to be zero. And why this moment is positive? This one hundred, if it's clockwise. Because one of the things is that we say that the convention that we use for internal moment is counterclockwise as positive. That's one of the things that we say, right? Counterclockwise as positive. But this is an applied moment, it's an external moment. And if you remember, whenever you have an external moment, this is positive. So you have to be very careful with that condition over there. Uh, that's really, really, really important. The only thing that we have to do now is put everything together. So I'm going to apply this equation. And then you're going to get 187,962.96 theta c plus 354.09. And that will be this 187,000. That will be CA. CA, no. CB here. That will be CB. So this is going to be NCB. Now I'm going to go with NCD. NCD, NCD, NCD is here. I don't know what I'm looking for that in the other page. Plus 140,972.2 theta C minus 195.79. And this is the moment CD. Plus the moment CA. Moment CA is in the other page. Moment C A is this one here. Moment C A, Moment C A is here. One eighty seven thousand nine sixty two point ninety six rotation at C plus one hundred equals zero. And this is moment C A. From here we can calculate our rotation at C. And the rotation at C is going to be negative 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Once we have the rotation, the only thing that we have to do is plug the rotation in each one of the equations that we have. Rotation C and will give us this moment. Rotation C will give us this and so on in every one of the equations that we have. And once you do that, you can do that in the calculator. Then you're going to get all the moments that we are looking for. Negative 47, keep per foot. Moment CA, negative 94, keep per foot. Moment BC, 382. Remember the results, <coughs> I'm sorry, the results might have a little bit of plus or minus a error depending on, on the decimals that we were working with. 1, 2, 3, BC, and CB. CB, 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 260. Keep per foot. Uh, depending on the decimal places, for example, I put this, I rounded up to negative 5. That wasn't negative 5 exactly. It was close to negative 5, but it wasn't negative 5. So depending on what you do, you're going to have some type of approximation errors. Keep it. MDC equals zero. There you go. Now we have all the moments. But we are interested in the end force members. So if we're interested in the end force members, let's work with the end force members. So what do you do? You put your structure here and then you put it here. This part I'm going to put it here. This is here. Uh, here I'm going to have the support C. I'm going to be the load. I'm 
and here is going to be the pixel port this is the pin for that part at this support C I'm going to have a concentrated moment of 100 this is going to be 2 keep per foot what else what else what else distances and then the leg here and this is going to be A C B and D <coughs> I know, and you know, because we have done this before, this is not our first rodeo, that this is going to be VB, and I call this VC to the left, and then I call this VC to the right, and these two forces, this and this, are transferred here, which in turn are going to give us this, which is the same as this which is the same as this, which is the same as that, and which is the same as that. So whatever value we get from here, that's going to be our AY reaction here. And now we have to put all the moments. Uh, well, same thing is going to happen here. In this case, I'm going to have this, which is BD. BD is the same as DY. And same thing here, BB is the same as BY. And the other thing that we need are the moments. So we get our table of moments, and then we start applying all the moments that we calculated before. For BC, this is 382. So 382, positive. So I put it positive. For CB, 260, positive. 260, positive. For uh, a CD, CD negative 266.3 negative here negative 266.3 negative 266.3 for DC zero for C A negative 94 94 for AC AC AC, 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 negative 47, negative 47, negative 47. There you go, negative 47. Now we have all the, the things that we need to. Of course, uh, we can work the whole problem by doing, for example, summation of moments, summation of moments at CL equals zero. So if I do that, you have negative BB. Remember this distance is uh, 15 plus negative this plus 382 plus 260 plus 2 times 15, 2 times 15 times 7.5 equals zero. And then with this, we can calculate BB, which is the same BY as 57.8 kips. Now, uh, we do summation of forces in Y here, in this part. Then we can get that BB minus 2 times 15. Uh, plus BCL equals zero. I know this value. So then I can calculate BCL and BCL is going to be equal to negative 27.8. Remember negative, this is important. That means that I mess up with that. The correct direction of BCL is this one. So that means that this BCL is going in this way and this is going in this way. Okay? Now we can work this side and I can do, for example, summation of moments at CR equals zero. And if I calculate moment here at zero, then you have negative 266, 66.3 plus VD times this distance. This distance is 15. So plus 15 VD equals zero. VD equal DY. 
and this is equal to 17.7 17.7 and now I do summation of forces in Y in the same part here and then you get VCR VCR uh, VCR plus VD equals zero meaning VCR is negative 17.7 meaning it's going to be acting in this way meaning this is going to be acting in this way and this is going to be acting in that way over there and if those two are in that way uh, yeah that was that was correct this is going in this way da, 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 da. now if I want to calculate what am I missing here you already have this moment this moment this moment this moment the only thing that I'm missing is a uh, I don't know. Ah, because I need the shear also here. And if I have the shear, the shear will become the axial here. So in this part, I'm going to have a shear. And that shear, uh, which also exists here, which it should be distributed, this part also. And the shear here is what? Uh, if this goes in this way, the shear has to come in this way. So AX is going to come in this way, and this is going to come in this way. But it doesn't matter what way, you just put it there. So you can call this, uh, actually this, this thing that I'm putting like that, uh, is the shear for this part. So I'm going to call that VC down, I don't know, and this is VA, which is AX for this part, the same. And if I want to calculate the VC down, this one here, then I can do summation of moments. I don't know, I'm gonna do summation of moments there. Summation of moments at C down equals zero. And if you do that, you have negative 94 minus 47, negative 94 minus 47, uh, and this distance is 15 so minus negative 94 negative 94 minus a uh, minus 15 ax equals 0 so ax equals negative 9.4 meaning the correct direction is in this way. So the correct direction for AX is this, meaning the correct direction for this is going to be like that. And then you can keep going and transferring all the values that you need to, to calculate the rest. If I want to calculate this value here, for example, I can do moment about this point and calculate that value. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I think this, uh, this is a nice problem to follow. And you can see how you can solve a frame, which is a big frame. And imagine that if you do this in using regular force method, how many unknowns do we have? We have three, six, seven, meaning four degrees of indeterminacy. Four degrees of indeterminacy will be working here for a week, and we haven't finished that yet. So anyway guys, I hope that you like this video and the next step is we're going to solve a frame with sway and that will be our last problem for this uh, chapter. See you later guys. Have a good day.